Ladies and gentlemen, the most dangerous name in baseball will be talked about in this podcast. Let you know ahead of time. Uh, I have to mispronounce his last name because to pronounce it correctly would ban this podcast from the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a major league uh, icon who's given some 50 years to major league baseball as a player, as a coach and developer. Of course, it's got to be Rusty Kunz. Now, Russell J. Kunz is an American former Major League Baseball outfielder. He played for Chicago, Minnesota, Detroit between 79 and 85. He never appeared in more than 84 games in any season during his playing career, but came to major prominence in the final game of the 84 World Series when he hit a pop fly to the second baseman that became the deciding RBI of Detroit's well-deserved world championship against the Padres. Now, he grew up in Kansas, California, playing three sports in high school and community college. He went to Division Three World Series twice with the California State University Stan- Stanislaus <coughs> before being selected by the Chicago White Sox in the 11th round of 77 Major League Baseball draft. Now, born February 4, 1955, uh, uh, after the 84 season, Kuntz was unable to return to form the next year. He was demoted to the minor leagues early in the 85 season. He was out of professional baseball as a utility player shortly thereafter. Since his playing career ended, Kuntz has worked with several Major League Baseball organizations, including the Astros, Mariners, Marlins, Royals, Braves, and Pirates. He has a, he's worked as assistant to the general manager, a minor league coach, a roving instructor, and major league base coach. From 2012 to 17, he was the first base coach for the Royals and has received substantial praise for his contributions to the team's success. Royals manager Ned Yost has said he's the best first best base coach in baseball. He elected not to coach in the 2020 season, but he returned to the Royals as first base coach for 2021. Now, as it stands right now, uh, the pride of Orange County continues to have an impact. Uh, one of the few players to win as a player and as a coach of World Series title. He was born to Chet and Willie Kuntz. His father was a bricklayer and later became an auto mechanic. The family moved from Orange, Orange, California to Wichita, Kansas when Rusty was very young, then moved to Paso Robles, California a few years later. He attended Paso Robles High School in California where he played baseball, basketball, and football. He said that baseball was the least favorite of three sports at the time and he was drawn to basketball mostly because of the game's pace. Now, continuing his education, Rusty attended Cuesta College in California State University, Stanislaus. At Cuesta College, he played center field on the baseball team, quarterback the football team, and was a center on the basketball team. After hitting for 402 and 442 batting averages in two seasons at Cuesta, uh, Kuntz's uh, father encouraged him to focus on baseball. At CSU, he played on two teams that went to Division Three World Series. He was later inducted to the university's Warrior Athletics Hall of Fame. Again, he was drafted by Chicago in 77. Now, he played 51 games for rookie level Gulf Coast League White, White Sox in 77, hitting for 287 as his team finished first in the GL, GCL standings. The next season, he was promoted to Class AA team, the Knoxville Sox, and he bypassed the Class C affiliate because the Knoxville center fielder was suffering from migraines and he won the starting center field position. He had 263 for Knoxville with 10 homers in 113 games. Now, the team at the time was managed by, of all people, Tony La Russa for part of the season and he were first place in the Southern League. Starting the 79 season with Chicago's class AAA affiliate, the Iowa Oaks, he played 122 games with 15 homers and hitting 294. Now, he was a big player, 6 foot 3, and weighed a very solid 190. He batted a right and true uh, 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 right handed. He made his MLB debut to White Sox on September 1st, 79, and spent all of 1881 with the Reds of White Sox, but he was used sparingly, registering less than 120 plate appearances in the two seasons combined. He started in 1982 in the minor leagues with Edmonton Trappers, but became a fan favorite, hitting seven homers and 34 RBIs and 193 at bats. At the time, he walked 50 times in his plate appearances for Edmonton. 
He was called back up to the Major League team near the end of the season, but was eventually traded to Minnesota in June 83, with the White Sox receiving minor leaguer Mike Sauters in exchange. He was traded to the Tigers for pitcher Larry Poshnik of the 83 season, and the Poshnik couldn't trade was prompted because future Baseball Hall of Fame outfielder Kirby Puckett was playing in the minor leagues for Minnesota's Class AA affiliate and was expected to quickly join the Twins as an impact player. In 84 with Detroit, he had the best numbers in his career, a 286 average and a 393 on-base percentage. <coughs> he appeared in a career-high 84 major league games that season, mostly as a pinch hitter and outfielder. Now, his big moment in the sun, of course, was the deciding game of the 84 World Series against the Padres. He pinch hit for a designated hitter, Johnny Grubb, with the bases loaded and a score tied at three. He hit a pop up to short, right field that Tony Gwynn was unable to see. Second baseman Alan Wiggins made the catch, but it was unable to prevent Kirk Gibson, who later hit a home run against uh, Goose Goshers in the game, from racing home from third with the go-ahead run. The Tigers maintained the lead after that, giving uh, Kuntz an unlikely game-winning RBI. Now, the 84 AL uh, Championship Series and the ensuing uh, World Series represent Kuntz's only career postseason appearances. In a 2010 Baseball Perspective article, Stephen Goldman wrote that the 84 Tigers was a great team that relied on a lot of fluke elements. The club had no regular first baseman, no regular third base uh, baseman, and a primary left fielder hit 239 against right-handers. The club made up this, uh, this for this in part and getting terrific production out of role players like Rupert Jones, the former Mariner, Johnny Grubb, and Rusty, players who wouldn't sink up again. Now, he returned to the Tigers in 85, but appeared just five games before being sent down to the minor leagues after batting 222 for Detroit's AAA affiliate, the, the, the venerable Nashville Sounds. He was released by Detroit. He did sign for with Oakland a couple of months later, but he did not play any games with them. He retired as a player with 277 games played, a 236 career batting average, 5 homers, and 38 RBIs. Now, when he was out of baseball in 86, of all things, he started working for UPS. He eventually worked as a coach in Houston in 87-88, then moved to Seattle. Uh, with Seattle, he served first base coach between 89-92, then joined the Maryland's in 93 as a minor league base running and outfield coach. He became the team's first base coach after a 94 campaign. And in 97, he moved into a role as a roving instructor with the Marlins. And in August of that year, in a task that I still think it was never finished, he worked on the defensive skills with Gary Sheffield, of all people, when the major league slugger was, na was struggling with injuries. Now, in late 2000, he retired, decided not to return his role as a first base coach and outfield instructor. Instead, he went back to his position as a roving instructor with the team, which allowed him for more time to be spent with his family. At the time, Marlins players, including Cliff Floyd and Mark Kotze, praised Kuntz for the amount of preparation that he put in his coaching. Kotze gave Kuntz credit for the stolen bases he had occurred. Floyd said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm telling you, he meant everything. He tells me about every pitcher we're facing. He keeps me going when I'm down. You don't get that too often in this game. You're expected just to be strong, handle everything, but it ain't easy sometimes. He's a player's man. He loved us. Now, when he was dismissed for his position with the Marlins before spring training in 2002, the move was part of a mass firing of Marlins personnel and player development and scouting after teams change in ownership. Quince, who was paid for the 2002 season, in any case through the terms of his contract, kept a job working on the ground screw at the team's spring training site. He had performed ground crew duties at the site for several years in the off-seasons. Now, late in 2002, the Braves hired Kuntz as a roving instructor. After the season, he was hired by the Pirates as a first base coach. In October 2005, the Pirates offered minor league positions to Kuntz and fellow coaches Gerald Perry and Alvarado Espinosa. He spent the next two seasons coaching between class AAA Indianapolis Indians and a major league club. Now, after 2007, the Royals named him their first base coach. In October 2009, the team reassigned him, designated him field instructor and special assistant to the league GM, to team GM, Dayton Moore. In August 2012, he was named the Royals' first base coach after the dismissal of Doug Sisson. 
Sisson had replaced Kuntz as the Royals' first base coach after 2010, but after the conclusion of the 2012 season, the Royals announced that they would retain Kuntz for 2013. In a January 2014 article, the Boston Globe listed Kuntz as one of the base running outfield coaches who had the most respect among his peers in the major leagues. Kuntz outfielders are fundamentally sound and get great jumps on balls. Kuntz has been able to improve arm accuracy. Now for 2018, the Royals announced that Kuntz would be moved to another role in the organization and would not return to his original position as first base coach, being replaced by Mitch Meyer. It was announced that he would return to his Royals first base coach prior to 2020. Kuntz, however, ultimately opted out of the 2010 season, 2020 season due to COVID concerns and was replaced by Damon Hollins. He eventually returned to the team the following year. Now, on November 3, 2021, the Royals announced that Kuntz would be moving from his coaching role to assume a front office role as a GM of quality control, as well as a special assistant to team president Dayton Moore. Now, on the personal side, he's not the only talented person in the family. His son Kevin was drafted by Royals in 2019 but he chose to play baseball at the University of Kansas. He was selected again by the Royals in 2013, and Kevin spent the 2013 campaign in the minor leagues with the Burlington Royals. Now, unfortunately, the coach has been a subject of sophomoric humor, mainly due to his surname's resemblance to a vulgar uh, word for the female anatomy. A 2010 Blue Chew Report article said his name was hands down the best name ever. So many jokes, so little time. In April 2013, the big lead published a post about the name after a photo depicted Kunz standing to the right of White Sox first baseman called Paul Konerka and Royals base runner Chris Getz. The resulting image uh, seemed to display the phrase Konerka Getz Kunz on the backs of their uniform jerseys. Now, I uh, first found out about R- Rusty the hard way because uh, a friend of mine that was working a local, a local radio station didn't know how to pronounce his last name. He called me up and he said, how do you pronounce the name? Well, I said, it's like any other name, you got to hit the Z. Like I said, I'm not going to make fun of man the way his uh, his name is spelled or thing because my name's Corrier or Carrier. Nobody calls me aircraft. So, ladies and gentlemen, for like what we're doing here with our uh, 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 big uh, Major League Baseball Vintage podcast, let us know with a like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, baseball is all about names, and Rusty had one of the best names, and still has one of the best names in baseball history. Thanks for listening. Bye.